Hello friends, by virtue of this video, I am going to highlight upon the structuring which the Apple did in Europe in order to save its tax. Uh, this structuring, uh, we came to know the nitty gritties of this structuring because of the European Union ruling, European Commission ruling against the Europe in the state aid case. What do you mean by state aid? According to the European Union, uh, if an, any of the member states provides a sweet deal, sweet deal to any of the company, multinational company of non-Europe or any of the inland company or any other European company in a sweet deal shall be in a form of concessional loan, cheap land or any tax ruling which favours a specific entity and such thing shall distort a competition amongst the member states. So according to the European Commission, there was a advanced pricing agreement which is also called as a tax ruling in favor of Apple. It was not just favored, it was very 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 much favored to the Apple and because of this tax ruling it paid up to 0.05% of the tax in 2011, 0.05% and 0.005% of the revenue or of the profits from Europe, from the operations in Europe, 0.005 in 2014. This is nothing except a sweet deal. So, such sweet deal are considered as a state aid that is aid provided by a government that distorts competition in European Union. According to this ruling, we came across the structure which the Apple incorporated, the Apple head in European Union. In this structure, the details are as under. Apple Incorporation USA has given or has incorporated two subsidiaries in Ireland, Apple Sales International and Apple Operation Europe. These two companies are unlimited liability company. Unlimited liability company. Question as to why unlimited liability company? According to the Irish law, if an unlimited liability company is established, which is held by an unlimited liability company, which is a non-EU member, then such companies are not required to file their financial statements to the regulator. In order to favor this, uh, unlimited liability company needs to have at least two shareholders. Apple Incorporation was, was one who was fully owning the shares, 100% owning, but the second holder was a nominee company which is the Apple itself created in the British Virgin Island and the, this company was unlimited company. So uh, unlimited company which is a non-EU member is which is the company set up in British Virgin Island is also having share in this unlimited company. Because of this, Apple Sales International as well as Apple Operation Europe do not file their accounts. Do not file their account because it is an unlimited company. ASI and AOE are given the right to use the international property which belongs to the Apple Incorporation. Apple Incorporation is USA headquarters. Because of using this Apple in intellectual property right, they receive a royalty income. The Apple Incorporation USA receive a royalty income and this ASI and AOE are given the right to manufacture and distribution outside America, outside America, United States of America as well as another American continent, countries in the American continent like Brazil, like Canada or per se. The operations of all that entities is taken care by is taken care by American American Apple Incorporation. However, European operations is taken care by this, and European in, in operations includes Europe, Africa, Middle East as well as India. All these countries operations is taken through ASI and AOE. Now consider my focus will be I am just highlighting upon it. My focus will be upon how did 0.005% happen, what was the structuring like. But to make that clear or just provide a gist as of now, then I will come into the nitty gritties. Uh, all this are taken into account. Some financial facts I will need to put before you. And this is this really makes you feel shocking awe if you are a small trader or if you are a salarized employee, if you are whole of your tax 30% amount which you pay before due date and on this case 0.005% it's really shivering amount and consider the facts in the USA the tax rate is 
on an average including state and central both federal the average rate turns out to be 38 39% in united kingdom the rate is 20% in ireland where they set up the incorporation was in ireland where cork island where they had just one assembly unit and in euro from where the european as well as middle east operations used to be carried out they had uh, the average rate is there is 12.5% but still effective tax rate of that subsidiary was 0.005% though the island tax rate is 12.5% uh, th what would they happen in this case both this European Union will be spared as well as uh, this American IRS in, uh, revenue organization is also putting his head on the shoulder as to what have you arranged 91.5 billion according to the balance sheet of 2015 balance sheet 5 annual report of 2015 of apple incorporation i found out this figure according to note 5 which consists of the income tax details 91.5 percent is the profits as a part of a resource which are earned from this european operation which they do not wish to repatriate into usa in usa it will be taxable if it is repatriated if it is not repatriated it won't be taxable and they have specifically provided that they do not intend to repatriate this amount had it been they repatriated they would have paid 30 30 percent of tax on it that is would amount to 30 billion dollar as on september 26 2015 balance sheet 186.5 billion dollars 186.5 billion dollars is amount of is amount of cash which is held outside USA effective tax rate which appears in the balance sheet is still 26 percent I'll come into the next part how is this still 26 percent which is a good amount I'll come to the next part what are my sources if you want uh, the a great deal of analysis I have mentioned in the description column which is beneath the video in the description column, I, am, I have mentioned my blog address. In the blog address, I have, I have mentioned everything as well as the relevant sources also I have mentioned, uh, which you can also read along with this video to get a better understanding of what I am trying to portray. Uh, when the point is, the golden goof, the point, the right to use the Apple intellectual property is transferred because of which they are making the international sales of the product whose creativity is designed in USA two third of the sales of Apple is from outside the USA one third is from USA besides this the retail stores which the Apple owns two third of the stores are in USA and one third of the stores are outside the USA mismatch of the revenue two third revenue is from USA one third out uh, two third is from outside USA one third from revenue however the stores two third of the stores are in USA I'll come upon it in the later part but the first part is to provide a guess about what was the advanced pricing agreement like two APAs were signed uh, Apple set up its first store or first operations in Europe uh, as an assembling line in Kur which is in Ireland it was set up in late 1980s however the first tax treaty or APA was signed with Ireland in 1991 and the same was re-signed in 2007 by both the company ASI and AOE the APA as we know determines about the what should uh, you predetermine with the assessing officer of the another company as to what should be your tax liability like the as per the advanced pricing agreements Irish company company set up in Ireland earns profits makes international sales and earns profit among that profit since it is the sales which is internationally you can't just say that this is the tax this is the sales in Ireland so kindly distribute the sales between Ireland and non-Ireland I will pay your tax in Ireland point one Irish profits should be apportioned but the point one as we all know that if you are a resident in a particular state then your global is income is taxable in that state so Question 1. Are these two companies, ASI and AOE, a resident of Ireland? Something to be laughed upon. According to the Irish law, according to the Irish law, 
23A, Section 23A of Income Tax Code. A person is said to be a resident of Ireland if your control and management, if your central control and management is in Irish for a particular year, irrespective of the fact that you are resident, you are registered as a company over there or you are a foreign company. That is for a foreign incorporation or for a company incorporated in Ireland, you will be taxable in Ireland only and only if only you will be considered as resident in Ireland and your global income will be taxable in Ireland only and only if your central management and control is in Ireland. Is the central management control is in Ireland? Is it Apple's? The question is, what did Apple do? Apple had a assembling plant over there, but it said that only and daily operational decisions are taken over here. However, the decisions which are critical for the cash management, for the expansion line, each and everything is taken. That is the central management and control of this enterprise is not in Ireland, it's in USA. So the question arises, if it is the central management control is in USA, then it will be considered, this particular entity should be considered as a resident of USA and they should pay tax on the global corporation. Here it is 12.5% and USA it's 40%. They will pay more tax. But what does USA law st states about, uh, what does USA law states about resident status. According to the USA law, an entity shall be considered as a resident of USA if and only if it is incorporated in USA. If your central management and control is in USA but the company is not incorporated in USA, it won't be considered as USA, as a resident of USA. So in this case, your incorporation is in Netherlands and your central management and control is in, is in USA but you are considered as resident by none of the countries. You are considered as stateless entity as provided over here. You are the stateless entity. So only and only Irish profits which is derived from Ireland is taxed in Ireland and the profits derived from the international income is to, according to this advanced pricing agreement which was signed only the Irish profits the tax need to be paid and the non-Irish profits shall be apportioned to the head office. Remember a company or a country has a right to tax what comes within its jurisdiction if it is a non-resident. Of a non-resident what I can tax is a income which is derived in my particular jurisdiction. It's global income I cannot tax because that particular entity is a non-resident. That Irish company that is a company incorporated ASI and AOE, the income derived in Ireland can be taxed by Ireland and the income from the international operations are taxed by head office. They won't, even if the Ireland cannot apportion that income country by country because it is in not their jurisdiction to apportion, to, it is not in the jurisdiction of sovereignty to make such apportionment. So, head office, they need to tax. The question is, do they have head office? They stated that they have head office, but that head of office has no employees. That head office had no premises. Only and only structural or managerial decision that were necessary for the conduct of the business, central management and control were taken in the head office, headquarters which are in USA on three monthly, twice monthly basis, two, two, once in a quarter or sometimes. So they had no employees, they had no premises, it was head office was only on paper. However, as per this sweet deal, there is APA, Irish profits are apportioned between Irish branch and head office. Irish branch taxable derived by Irish branch is taxable at 12.5 percent and because it is a stateless entity head of is a stateless entity no particular country know that whether it is they are resident or not no tax is paid on such head of income as it is stateless according to the 2011 balance sheet there was a total income of 22 billion dollars profits of 22 billion dollars uh, according to the formula of the APA the Irish government said that 0 0.5 million, that 5 million dollars, 50 million dollars, 50 million dollars is the profit of the Irish branch and pay tax on it at 12.5 percent. Out of the 22 billion dollars, only 0 0.5, only 50 million, that is 0 0.5 billion dollars is taxable in Ireland and 21.5 billion dollars is taxable in head office, but that head office is stateless tax is paid at 0 percent. Thus effective tax rate it will be around 10 million dollars. So you pay 10 million dollars on 22 billion dollars of profit. 
is it reasonable that's why it turns out to 0.05% it's totally unreasonable the argument uh, within the so it's clearly visible that there is a state aid provided because iris should have stated that there is no employee in ho there are no premises it is only on paper there is no economic justification to apportion so much of income to a head office which is only on paper you need to have a portion that on ireland they should have paid tax on ireland uh, according to the state aid ruling what is your tax policy what is your tax rate is not a matter of consideration by european commission but if you provide a specific advantage to a specific company that is clearly visible which is provided to apple is the uh, state of is the fact of the matter and that's why it's not logical to have such a sweet deal so in general what what is the general practice in the general practice is you shift your profit from high tax base to a low tax base that is you create a even if in to do this in a general practice what is done is you create four five subsidiaries in cayman island in british virgin island or some another in cyprus in mauritius in all such area you create a subsidiaries and your international profit which is at a high tax rate it is a high tax rate zone you transfer it at a high price you transfer the goods from that high at high prices to a low tax rate jurisdiction from where sale is made to some another country at high rates and that's how the profit is shifted to such high ta- high tax based country to a low tax based country however the apple practice was they didn't transfer the profit to entities they kept the profit in the same entity and make that particular entity stateless and didn't provide a profit on the international income only and only irish income was taxed that to only a small part was treated as irish income now coming on part 2 on this is this is where the crux is when when the ireland received the income that is they made a sale to italy they made a sale to uk they made a sale to india asia asian countries that is india they made a sale to some another swiss or something then this all entity entities in this all place would have repatriated to ireland right so when they had repatriated the amount to ireland then the tax particular tax did that particular tax jurisdiction question about the for what purpose is a payment made like what we have as a section 911 in the income tax act which says that if there is business connection in india then you should have tax that place then did this question arise and how would have this they would have tackled when the question arise this we will see within few times however the question is this which we discussed it was the main area of argument which you will even further find in my blog thank you